Stealing dubs when you are stealing funds. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Sharon Das Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for, for, for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're gonna go down that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD, uh -huh. ADHD. I got that thing. Oh, no, calm down, down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. You got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, Mickey <laughs> Rodriguez. Why you not freaking slapping in young? Why a man and slap a woman? Look, you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions to, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, KW, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you think no, no. I did is wrong. I don't no, want no. you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi there, welcome to the Gildavi Freddy Kisun show. The end of October, we have completed 16 months of the show. The two guests on our program this evening, we are very grateful for. They've always responded to our invitations. This is their fourth appearance, and out of those 16 months, we have to be grateful to both our viewers and our guests. And I'd like to extend an invitation to both of them this evening because of their generosity in helping to make this program a success, I'd like to say to both of them, they have an open invitation to appear in this program if there's any exigent topic that has arisen in Guyana or the world that we, they would like to uh, talk about, they have an open invitation on this program. Uh, along with me tonight, of course, is the peren our perennial journalist, Leonard Gildari. We are going to talk about a topic, a subject, uh, to put it more forcefully, a story that is going on in the world that has caught the attention of the entire world. This is where the attention of the world is focused on, not because of the ongoing tragedy, but because of if the tragedy gets deeper we may get involved in a war that we have never seen before since the Second World War. We're talking about the Israeli action in the Gaza. Our guest this evening is, I would say, um, need no introduction when a person is a former president of Guyana, they need no introduction. To talk on the Palestinian crisis, and to talk about the implications of the crisis for the world is former President Donald Ramatal. And I don't think I would misuse the term famous in describing our other guests. One of the famous names in Guyana, James Bond. My name is Bond, James Bond. My license 007. I have a license to speak on anything I want to. And so we've given James a license to speak on anything he wants to this evening. So, um, without further ado, because of the topic, we're not going to get into um, all the questions we want. After my first question, we come to Gildari. Because of protocol, in respect of the former president, we'll start with him. Uh, Mr. Ramatar, one of the most powerful countries in the world, one of the largest countries in the world, and one of the largest economy of the world sits near to Guyana, Brazil. And its president said, what is going on in Gaza is not a war, it's genocide. As a former president and one of the longest serving politicians in the region and maybe elsewhere, do you agree with President Lula's description of what's going on in Gaza? Is it genocide? 
completely i completely agree with him um if you just look at the targets that are one there's a cap it bombing of a of the gaza strip which is 21 miles long and an average of four miles wide and there are 2.3 or 2.4 million people living there they're bombing everywhere the cap it bombing the place on the one hand and on the other hand they're they're targeting hospitals schools uh even ambulances and so forth now driving on the road are being hit. Um, the whole idea is to try to, to, to kill as much as possible, they, and they, regardless of who they're killing, including children, about one third of the people who have been killed. Every hour the figure changes of how many people are dying. I don't know if it's reached the 9,000 yet, but one third of that are children and uh, women women and children are, are dying people losing their whole family 57 family families have been written off the list in gaza everybody completely dead um they're targeting journalists they try to stop the news from coming out to the world even a lot of 34 journalists have died since the 7th of uh, october at least that was up to yesterday probably the figure has changed um since then so doctors are being killed in, in their hospital and in their homes, medical personnel, you, human rights people who are in from the United Nations are being murdered. And so are also you have um, um, other workers from the United, United Nations are all being killed. The whole idea is, I think, as I said, to, to try to force the people out is the continuation of what began in 1948 that the Palestinians called the Nakba, when people were forced out of their land and of their homes. 800,000 people were moved at one time in order to make way for new arrivals, Jewish arrivals from Europe. So yes, I would say that uh, President Lula is completely right. This is a this is a total genocide that is taking place. And I will also be a little bit stronger than, than um, President Lula to say fascist methods are being used for this purpose. Leonard? Thank you very much, sir, um, gentlemen, and good night, folks. Well, let me start off by diverting a little. Something came to my attention yesterday, and I think Guyana would stand united with that because there's a little of foreign affairs, but on the domestic side. A video circulated in which a man ordered or a man told a couple, Venezuelan, who appeared to be a Venezuelan couple, to undress and walk the road. That's after they were accused of stealing. So he forced them, and you got to see the expression on these people's face. Um, as a Guyanese, I was totally ashamed and taken aback uh, by that. And I hope that uh, the police who have seen, since issued a call for more information and so they could get those people that they arrest that man whoever he is and uh, bring uh, the full brunt of the law should come down why is that important um uh, and i would still like to see those people too yeah, anybody knows that couple my company would like to reach out and help that couple because at uh, at a time when we were without anything and people were leaving here in droves Venezuela was one place that accepted people and I'm not sure um, that something like that would have occurred. And we went all over the place. At this point in time, they need our help. We have opened our arms and we have Guyanese behaving like pigs in our country. That is unacceptable. And so I want to make that call. If you know that couple, let them reach out to myself and Freddie. I would like to extend some help to them. And I hope that the police catch that individual. We're going to make it more famous. Um, more people, infamous. Yeah, or more uh, infamous, yes, right. Freddie Kisun, uh, people are asking, why is the Gaza uh, situation important? How relevant? We have our domestic issues here. I'm going to ask Mr. Bond that question. Why is the Gaza situation important to be here? Um, first, um, thank you for having me again, um, Freddie Leonard. Um, it's an honor again to meet up with President Ramatar. Whenever we meet up, it's it's laughter. <laughs> um, it's good to hear him. Good to see him. Um, it is important because Ghana sits as a member of the United Nations, and um, as we would know, the United Nations in, 
is the institution that created the, the State of Israel. It was the United Nations that uh, passed a declaration in which it allowed Israel, uh, Jews, to settle in Israel from Europe after the, the Holocaust. Holocaust. Um, we sit as a member of, the, of, a nation, of a nation body, and um, it is important for us because we must be responsible in our, in our re responses as a nation because it's going to happen to us. Um, we have an aggressor, whether I understand um, Leonard's position on Venezuelans coming here, but as I view it, we sit in, a, in an area where someone is seeking to claim our land as a, and are doing, having aggressive postures to that. So it is critical that Guyana understands, I think Guyanese understands, that this could be you, meaning the Palestinians could be you. Um, in 1948, when the State of Israel was formed, in, I think it was May 14th, um, Israel, the Israelis or the Jews, um, they are made up of, of sh a very small amount of population. The area, Syria, Palestinian, named by the Romans, was a, a mixture of Muslims and Christians. And it was chosen for the Jews to settle there. But they made up, I think, a 6% of the population. And they were given the majority of the land, 56% of the land. Um, Again, there were certain um, decisions made in the UN, and uh, one of the documents suggested that there be a two-party state, two state, a two, a two state, uh, uh, two states are in mutual existence. Israel was allowed to form, but Palestine was not allowed to form, and I think that is one of the most critical situations that um, has, has caused all of this that there is no two-party state. So whenever Israel is attacking, um, Israel is attacking in the name of defending its borders against terrorism. If this were, uh, Palestine was, were, was a state, then the situation would be much, much different. And then more sanctions could be brought to bear against Israel. Um, Israel would become a pariah in, in terms of this. If this action was done by any other country, for example, Russia, Ukraine, um, the U.S. and Vietnam, we're talking about Vietnam, uh, the USSR and Afghanistan, U.S. and Iraq, and the other conflicts that we've had. If any of this was done by any other per, any other state, it would have been labeled uh, genocidal, you name it. It would have been named, that would have been an act of war. And this implication is very critical because, you know, um, the world is divided as it is right now. USSR, China, uh, sorry, Russia, China, um, and the other BRC countries, uh, Brazil, India, um, they have all formed the BRICS. And they, have, they are completely opposed to this action. Of course, the US, as an island on the other, other side, reminiscent of the Cold War, is supporting Israeli action. So Guyana is strategically placed, uh, we've always been unaligned, but we are strategically placed now where we must sound our voices because this could be us and this is this is uh, my position um, looking at the conflict is that we must send a strong message a very very strong message for the creation of the two of a two state um, two states in the area of another state for example for the people of Palestine and it can't be the the small area in which the, the, these people uh, the two million people exist on the Gaza Strip it has to be the territory uh, designated in 1948 because I think, um, if we were to recall, I think it was the Balfour Declaration. Um, in it, specified very clearly that uh, the people of Palestine, non-Jews, must be allowed to live there in peace and harmony, and their rights respected. So for all, all through the years, um, there's always been that intent to respect the people of Palestine, to respect... Um, even though Israel has a right to its own territory to respect that the Palestinians uh, live there, that is their home, um, they've been displaced, and just how the Jews were allowed to return or oh, return to Palestine. And I know return, re return, never had any Jews re there, return to Palestine, that the Palestinians be allowed to establish their own state and uh, exercise their own rights as citizens to Palestine. Gentlemen, this thing started on October the 7th when Hamas did something that I think both Gildavi and I share the sentiments of unacceptable, horrific, and 
unbelievable that a dance was going on and the Hamas attacked the dance. Women and children were killed. Israel was quite upset. But what Israel has done, and you're seeing the focus now, is responded in a way that could be classified as the most terrible, terrible destruction of a people since 1945 in Germany. Now, when you look at what, when you look at the area former President <laughs> Ramata described, a four miles and what have you, wide, 21 miles, 21 long, miles long. Four miles. When you bomb in such an area, it has to be <laughs> one of the most atrocious act of destruction of people in world history. You can take some of the most fantastic jets and bomb in an area 21 miles by four miles. That has to be a war crime. Um, I, I, I want to ask both of you, because there seemed to be a shift of, uh, of people who support Israel that, look, you're doing crazy things. You're going beyond the pale. But maybe it's already done. Too many lives have been lost. I will first respond to you in the same way that the Secretary General of the United Nations in this speech uh, that he made, he said what happened in October 7th did not happen in a vacuum. The people in Gaza had been living, and, and it's, it's described, and I think quite correctly, well, maybe not even correctly, it's described as, as the biggest open-air prison in the world, because these people can't leave the place without, they, they, they have so many different checkpoints, they can't move. They can't go, they can't get, get permission to go. They can't go beyond a certain distance in the sea to fish because the Israelis will stop them from being fished there. I would say it's a concentration camp that they've been living there for, and it has been getting worse every day. Since 2014 and so forth, it's gotten even worse. The people have been living in, in, in really terrible conditions um, in Palestine. It's like asking, it's like asking a slave not to revolt. When you, when you condemn the Palestinians for any action that they take. It's like, it's like telling a slave not to revolt, to free himself. The Palestinians are in, it, that is the position that they are in, and particularly the Gaza Strip. And um, they are, they are this, they, they, the explosion that took place in the first instance, as far as I could see from being here and from the information available, the, pri the primary targets were military targets, but it's very unfortunate that this area was attacked maybe by some indisciplined persons. But there were 300, 300 Israeli soldiers taken captive in that. And why did they do that? Why did they do that? They did that largely because there were more than 5,000 Palestinian and Israeli day jailed, including children and women. Women are raped in the prison in, in, in Israel, and children are, are there growing up in, 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 in prison conditions. And they, the only way that they can get their people out is by trying to bargain and, 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 and do a deal to, to uh, exchange. That was the reason for what they have done. Um, but. As I said, it's it's it's, it's oppression, the, the, and it's a, you gotta make a distinction too between the oppressor and the oppressed. The Palestinians are the ones that are oppressed. The Palestinians are the ones that face violence every day. They are they are ready in order to try to take away the people land, has created settlers. When you hear they're talking in the news about Palestinian fighters are in the villages, what type of villages do you think it is? These are settler villages where the, the the Israeli government armed people to the teeth, mainly former army people um, or present army people, and the people who come in from outside, mainly Americans now are part of the main settlers who go in there now with, with good military training or using to use weapons, and they shoot Palestinians with impunity. Up to recently in the West Bank, not even in the Gaza, yeah, a man was killing, going yeah. to pick yeah, yeah. olives to make olive oil, to make a little bit of a living. He was, he was killed and nobody's charged for these things. They, 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 this, you talk about life matters, the Palestinian life doesn't matter to these people. In fact, they're just killing them 
as they please and they don't even in, they don't have any regard even for children so um i think you got to put it in the context when you when we when we talk about these things these are the things that palestinians face every single day and to call it a war that the media is call it a war is totally Misleading. misplaced because yeah. A war, no army, uh, no, they, these people got no army, no tanks, no airplanes, nothing they have. Uh, they got the weapons that they, they attack the, the Israeli uh, military outposts from are things that they bought in the black market. Most of it was what the Americans were sending to Ukraine. That is what that is the, the type of weapons they used to fight, uh, to be fighting with. And apparently they have some other stuff because I see they're destroying some tanks in the Gaza right now as we talk uh, with um, anti-tank weapons. So they seem to have had these things stored up and waiting for a while. But to call it a war is to, to suggest that there's two armies fighting each other. Palestine does not have an army. The Palestinian people have never had an army and they are being subjected to terrible oppression. And talk, just talk about Israel got a right to defend itself. Well, Palestine has more than a right to fight for its freedom. And um, so I, that, that is, um, I would say. And the second thing, I just go back to one of the questions you asked, Mr. Bond, just now, Mr. James Bond. Um, is the, is the, the issue of how it affects us. I think it has a very profound, why, why, why we must be very concerned. I think we must be very, very concerned because what is actually taking place before our eyes is the destruction of laws, international laws, violation of laws of the United Nations taking place with impunity. And that means, what does that mean? That we will have a world where, where might is right, where there's no rules, no laws to, go, to control and govern anything. Because that is what is taking place. In front, every single UN resolution has been has been um, has been violated by the Israeli Israeli forces. And now they have the support of the powerful countries in the world: the United States, Europe. European Union, Canada. Australia, Canada. Canada. These are the people who are supporting them. And when you look at their history. Of the people of the of the countries that are supporting the Israelis, these are the same people who did similar things with the native Indian population in in the United States and Canada, and in in Australia with their native population as well. And Europe, well, we know Europe uh, colonized most of the world anyhow. So, to me, it is it is um, this is not a question to to um, to be ambivalent about. I think we got to take a strong stand. Israel is is performed is, is is behaving like a fascist state, and they are practicing genocide for sure. It's the worst. Even some people now, I just saw in the the the, the one of the persons who work in the human rights section of um, uh, in the human rights section, his office is in New York. He has resigned in protest. Of all that is all that is taking place there, and some of the things he said to, in his letter of resignation, he said, "Once again, we are seeing a genocide unfolding before our eyes, and the organization that we serve appears powerless to stop it." He described it as genocide, mm -hmm. and this is this is a, a employee of the United Nations. His name a directing the Human Rights yeah. Commission. Yeah. Yeah. The UN Human well, Rights we could talk. Uh, and we could, he described uh, before. He said things like, "In Gaza, civilian homes, schools, churches. In fact, the churches are 1150 years old. Church was destroyed by Israeli bombs, um, and that has more value not only not only from the point of view of religion, it has value to our, to our history, to our culture, to to you know, to all human beings, mosques and medical institutions are wantonly wantonly attacked, as thousands of civilians are massacred. In the West Bank, including the occupied Jerusalem, homes are seized and reassigned based entirely on race, and violent settlers' pogroms are accompanied by Israeli military units across the land. Apartheid rules. This is this is this is this is the 
UN official who couldn't take this anymore. Well, we have, um, I think the world, um, the, the majority of the world um, is united against um, um, Israel in this. And what, what what is important to note in this whole thing is that United Nations has spoken and uh, the leader of Israel, Netanyahu, he has made it very, very clear that is war that we're not going to stop, that we're going to make sure that, that we're going to take over and eradicate and get rid of Hamas and the rest of them. Well, you know, by doing that, collateral damage is going to come. But I think people are looking but, at the humanitarian side. I just, want to just, look... Just take, listen, listen to yourself a little bit. Collateral damage. This is a 21-mile straight stretch. It's a whole... Four miles wide. 2.4 million bomb. people living in it. And you know the amount of bombs that were dropped up to a few days ago was more than the all the bombs that the US dropped in in, in Afghanistan over the last the last 10 years yeah, that they have yeah, been there yeah, in the past yeah. uh, and it's more powerful than the bombs that destroyed Nagasaki and Hiroshima that is yeah. and this is a four mile strip and you talking about collateral damage but you're digging a hole you're digging a a deli- this is not collateral uh-huh. damage i mean i'm just putting it very uh, clearly to you right you cannot describe this as collateral damage this is a deliberate attempt to kill a whole people or chase them out of the place well let me ask a question has anybody and maybe bond if you, if you could probably answer this is anybody looking at the strategic location of um, Gaza, that Gaza area? There's a canal next to it in which um, ships, I think 10% of the, the, the shipping industry of the world is passing through there. Uh, do we know if um, there is going to be some fallout from that and if we're going to see a rise? Because there's another thing, because people are asking, what's the relevance of this? Well, the relevance, I, I was looking at the news today, and they're saying, you might have a knock-on effect from that on the cost of containers coming here. That means that you're going to have a cost um, in its parts, in your grocery, a whole bunch of other stuff. If you got stuff coming from wherever, China, it has to pass through that area there. So you have some issues. Do we know? You're talking about the Suez Canal? Um, yes. Well, the Suez Canal is not near Gaza. It's, it's not near our Gaza. That's, that's a thing that's that was a, that's part of that's that's Egypt. Egypt. That's yeah. Egypt. But it, it, the fact is, it, there was, it was seized by Israel, France, and Britain. In 1956, it, 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 yeah. 1956. Yeah, so there may be, again, the, the implications, the worldwide implications of what is happening. For example, when one, whenever one Arab bleed, the whole Arab community nations bleed. So Iria, uh, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, um, all these countries are grieving for their Palestinian brothers. Um, so Egypt, although Egypt and Israel signed a peace treaty and, and brokered peace between themselves, um, Egypt may, at the end of the day, say, you know something, we're going to cease all access uh, of Israeli parts, other products, uh, whoever acts in the, the Swiss Canal, and just limit it. There, 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 there's so many, so in my view, there's a lot of international ramifications from this. Um, Again, if countries decide to uh, take forceful action against Israel, then the fallout may does not just be a in... world war. Yeah, it, 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 this is this is actually as I see it, is the answer. If you understand understood understand the Cold War uh, of pitting nations against each other, Russia, China, Brazil, India, South Africa, the BRIC countries, India, they will take a position. They will take a side. They've already said you know so we're standing with China, with, with the Palestinian people. Although the US and the, Europe, the European Union, others are standing with them, this will divide them. And I believe um, there may not be a, a solution except a forceful solution in terms of, we have to revisit the territory Israel was given before, um, at the time it was formed. Israel has to go back to its original, st- uh, original the boards it signed on to. I don't think it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a case where um, they may say, yes, we've had the wars in 67, 73, whenever, um, and we've claimed territory along the West Bank, um, the Gaza Strip, the Golden Heights. We've claimed all that. It now belongs to us. No, I think yeah, they, they, must, they must they must withdraw into the original state they were, they were in in 1948 and allow for the... the, the, the the rightful creation of the Palestinian state. Unless that I see uh, with the kind of intransigent leadership we have now from 
Putin and Xi Jinping and these guys, you are going to head towards some kind of impasse. But they're the ones who come. Whether international, whether, whether, whether it's, whether it's uh, uh, cold or hot, there will be an impasse because the world is going, some side is going to stand firm with the Palestinians that we're not budging and some is going to, some country is stand firm with the, the Israelis that we're not budging. And they're, they're going to be a meeting of the heads. Um, it's going to be difficult for Iran to be respected in the world and among its people if this thing gets worse and it is getting worse i think there's going to be a lot more people dying because the criterion the criterion that israel has used the day before yesterday and they're shameless about it is if they see a hamas if they believe that a hamas commander is in a building in a school in a hospital they're going after that commander and they're going to destroy that building he's in. Now, they did that to a refugee camp and more than 50 people died, more than uh, hundreds were injured. And they said their policy is that they're going after where Hamas is. Now, if you are going after Hamas in a 20, 21 miles by 4 miles and you are going to demolish buildings that you see that you believe Hamas soldiers are in, you're going to destroy, in a matter of weeks, a whole nation. Um, how can Iran save face and anybody respect it if it doesn't respond to that? And if I Iran acts, I think the U.S. is going to get in a confrontation with Iran, and we're going to have something bigger on our hand. What I want to ask both of you, is if this thing gets very, very, very terrible in involving the world, what do you think China would say this is the opportunity for us to take what is a part of China, Taiwan, Taiwan. Taiwan <laughs> and would Putin just decide, well, this is going to be the end of Ukraine? Don't you, don't you think those two implications? Uh, I think there are many, many implications. The very fact that the American has moved three um, Three warships, uh, aircraft carriers into the yeah. area, along with other other uh, assets, they have moved into the area. And the shameful thing about it is that they have been supplying, even even though the Palestinian people hardly got anything, they have been supplying more and more weapons and more than fourteen billion dollars of, of 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 military assistance they are giving to Israel um, right now to fight against uh, unarmed people. Look, I mean, you're seeing yourself we, on the on the television screen, Al Jazeera. You know that um, Brinkin went to Qatar to 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 um, to to tell, warn them that they shouldn't be the um, shouldn't be showing these things as they're showing now. Um, so that the very fact that they're there, I I don't know if they want to fight with Iran. They want to push an opportunity because for a long time they have been um they and israel have been uh threatening iran to in fight iran to bomb iran and all of that but iran is not not the iran of long ago iran has a lot of uh, they have a lot of uh, assets i think look at the very fact that i believe that they are from re in recent times that they are the best producers of drones in the world today, the Iran is produced. So Iran is not a, a pushover, and um, and that can have implication because no one knows what would be the position of, of other countries if, if that uh, Iran's allies. And its nuclear arsenal has not been checked. And, and, <laughs> uh, well, we know for it's a fact that Israel so has. Israel no, has Iran's, no, Iran's Iran doesn't nuclear have. Iran does they, not they have. Don't have. <laughs> they don't have. But, um, but, the, the, but if they have, they wouldn't they, want the world to know. They would use it as a surprise. <laughs> No, I don't think they have. They, the world would have known if they had. Yeah, but, the satellites um, would, would but, know. Yeah, yeah. But um, it is either either to protect Israel, to do what they please inside of Gaza so that no other Arab country will dare to want to come in, or to destroy, to, to provoke Iran to such a position that they will destroy Iran. That That is another possibility that, that exists. But you're quite right. The situation is so so dangerous because you can never tell what what um, 
what can happen. There's a, now there's another issues given up on the northern border, I think, of Israel. With Hezbollah. With Hezbollah, Lebanon, yeah. which has got a very uh, army of about 100,000 people, and they're probably far better equipped than, um, than Hamas. And Israel is finding it very, very difficult now to fight Hamas, who are half-starved people, no army, and if they have to fight with Hezbollah, it's going to be very difficult for them as well. Um, so the implications are are enormous. It, we could be we could be blindly walking into a, a into a, a, a world war, and if you have a world war, well, the world is finished because the amount of nuclear weapons that exist. If two nuclear weapons nations clash, the world is finished. All of us will be finished. In fact, John Kennedy once spoke about uh, um, about a nuclear war if it happens. He said those who die immediately would be the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. um, because Plus people would spend months suffering in the nuclear skin winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, 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 you, it, that is why I think all of us got an, a, a, resp a responsibility to raise our voices, voices because we are not part of this, directly part of the struggle, but all of us are involved. Because if this thing leads to a war, we, we, we won't be sitting down here again. That would be the end. James? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree um, with the sentiments expressed. Um, like I said, there is the possibility, one. And um, we've tried, I, I said that we've tried, but the diplomacy has tried for decades. Diplomacy has tried since 1948 um, to resolve, even before 1948, but I'm thinking about after Israel became a state, to have the two states peacefully coexist, the peoples peacefully coexist. And um, Israel has always been a, a, an area. I think um, what, what we, people miss is that Israel is not just about Jews and Muslims, but for the Christian community as well, Israel hold some uh, close affinity for Christians as well. Um, that's not and, true. That's not true. You know, the Palestine, the Palest the land, the Palestinian land, got it got very important um, um, things for all three of those religions: Islam, Judaism, and no. And, but what he's saying is that Christians will have more affinity. To this race called the Jews. I'm not. Well, no, no, no. That's not that's my not point. I'm, what I'm saying, I'm trying to appeal to my fellow Christians. I'm saying the area in which the conflict is occurring right now holds significance to the Christian community. I know, as it stands, it looks as if it's against Muslims and Jews. No. But Christians, let me finish. But Christians must understand that the area in question is is dear to us as well. And I think we must raise our voices um, to ensure that there's peace in that area. Area, we must raise our voices. Um, but don't, don't, don't cloud it by religion. This is not a religious fight. This is a fight for. It's like fighting for independence. This is a fight for national liberation. This is a fight the Palestinian people are trying to fight to live a normal life. They want to have to live a normal life. They want to determine their own destinies. They want to have their own state where they can decide their own direction and, and so forth. For it. They want to develop like a normal country. This is a fight for freedom. This is like an anti-colonial anti fight. In, but the only difference is from we and the England was far away from us. But the colonizers and the colon colonialized are living in the same, uh, are in the same. So, so are you are you the view that Jerusalem doesn't hold so much significance? That one of the reasons yeah, but that you're not letting go of Jerusalem Jeru is because of this religious close. If it's really important, all three the to, it, that, that's my point. Um, President Ramatar, is that Israel has not budged. Israel has not it budged because of religion. No, Israel has not budged because they want <laughs> the whole That's one of the reasons they've not budged. That's they want the whole place for, them. for themselves. Why do you think they're carpet bombing Gaza? I, again, Israel has not budged an inch. One of the reasons, very important reasons, because the significance of Jerusalem to them. 
that is part and parcel of what they are saying. We're not allowed um, to, we're not going to give the uh, Palestinian state X, Y, and Z because the Palestinian state said we must have East Jerusalem. Again, because it's religious significance to the Palestinian people, uh, the Muslim people. And Israel is saying, no, we're not giving you that because of its support to us. I'm just saying one of the issues that is holding back the peace is a religious issue. And I'm saying that Christians have more importantly stayed afar from criticizing Israel because of its significance to them as Christians. I think and, I'm saying, a point there, uh, and I'm saying to them, Donald, this is not about your closeness thing. to Israel and uh, the place. It's about Look, having the Palestinian Christian. people exist in peace and allow to have their own state, whether or not it's called Israel. Whether or not it's called Israel, it's all part and parcel of an area which the Palestinians have lived, have lived and occupied. And when Israel was, when the Jews were out of that particular area, the Palestinian people were still there. When the state of the Israel formed in 1948, the Palestinians were there. Muslims were there. So my Christian sisters and brothers should raise their voices to ensure that uh, we're supporting Palestine on this issue and the Palestinian people on this issue of creating a state uh, for them where they could live in peace. What's your, what's your essential disagreement? I'm not disagreeing. With, religious, I'm not, I'm with not, the religious theory. Because it's not because a, the religious what theory. I'm saying, does no, what I'm saying, the fight, in, the, what is taking place in, in, in that area is not a religious fight. The talk about Jerusalem was recognized. I'm not an expert on the religious issue, so I won't go into a debate about who, who is more important for. But the United Nations recognized that it's important for all three of these religions. And that is why they had a special, the, the, the recommendation for the very beginning was a special kind of arrangement about Jerusalem being managed. In fact, the uh, Palestinians were one of their demands is that East Jerusalem, not the whole of Jerusalem, That's what I'm saying, sir. Sir. East Jerusalem would be would be their, their capital. capital. Good. So, but but I I think the, your Christian brothers and sisters should support it because of the sheer That's what I'm inhumanity. Saying. That's not what I'm not saying. because not because they're Christian. No, I'm saying irrespective of their religious views. Because they're I fighting for, because the Palestinian people are fighting for their freedom. They're fighting to come out of oppression. They want, they don't want to live under occupation. President, I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you may not understand the implications, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of Christians. I don't who doubt give that. But Israel, the right? No, I'm, he, let me hear me, President. I'm saying there's a lot of Christians who think Israel is right to do what it's doing. There are a lot of Christians who believe that. And I'm saying that I should not be their possession. I, 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 get my point. Um, Freddie, I believe I you believe get my point? Are, I believe there are Christian countries that see this thing in religious in religious lens. I, I think there's I think countries see this thing in two terms. It's white versus non white, white in the real Caucasian sense of the term, and it's also in religion. But at the same time, I, 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 I think I understand. There is no, there is no dichotomy in the two points. Um, one is that there is a religious Christian sentiment for the Jewish and people. And I'm praying for the Jews, actually. Right. <laughs> because of the affinity of Exactly. And Donald's position is this. Fine, fine. But... It's a it's an anti-colonial struggle. So there is. I don't disagree with. I him, don't yeah. think there's. A I want to take thing. you guys down another road. Um, Hamas, uh, and they're the leaders within Palestine, and the decision was taken, I presume, at the leadership, for an attack to have been made in Israel. I'm just putting that that forward. Um, what happened there next is that the entire um, Palestine is paying for that right now. I want to provoke some thoughts here now. The leadership of Venezuela is going in December and they are going for a referendum. And very well, a decision could be taken. We can't rule that out completely. I want to ask a couple of questions here because one day the people of Palestine woke up and their place are being bombed because this thing happened very, very quickly. Is there a lesson for Guyanese 
when it comes to the Venezuela situation and the parallels from it that could be drawn from Palestine and Israel? The, 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 in terms of our readiness, the, the in terms of our us, alertness. The, I don't think you should mix up the issue, but the thing for us, the most important thing for us is upholding the rule of law, international law. We don't want, it's not in our interest as a small country to have laws being destroyed. Yeah, it's more in the interest of small countries to uphold, to uphold the law. law yeah. And that is, that is, um, that is, the um the 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 mean the most important thing for us in this issue one of the things that all Guyanese should have been behind the Palestinians right now is to demand the rule of law and to stop the violation of of all the the laws that you yourself have set up in 1945 when you set up the United Nations you have lived by it in some cases you violated it here and there but this gross violation that is taking place now is has the danger of of totally undermining the united nations and if that happens then you have a world in which might is right and that is going to be horrible well the speech the by, by, by the leader of israel is very very clear the band says i'm not abiding by what you're saying it's war but that is why we have to to to, to force them to abide by it but and we got to force them to abide by it and and and, and, and demand that one of the good things that is happening right now is that you have such an opposition, large amount of Jews. The Jews just took over uh, yesterday. I think they had a big demonstration inside of the uh, the main trade station in in Manhattan. Um, Jews against, not in our name. They're saying, they're de "This is not. This is this is to come back to the point." that they're, they're not saying that this is a religious issue. The Jews are saying that the Palestinians should have a right to have their freedom. Not only Jews, but freedom-loving people the world over. United Kingdom had some of um, the biggest demonstrations in recent times calling for, for this. Because everybody recognized that if this thing is allowed to, if, the, the, if Israel is allowed to do as it please, then the whole world is in danger because if, we were living in, in a situation, as I said, where anything can happen. The but, parallels, James? Yeah, it's not the first time we've had, um, I, I don't mean to be too critical of the United Nations, but history has taught us that it's not the first time we've seen um, an ineffectual world body. Uh, we saw it in the League of Nations um, uh, that couldn't prevent the, the, the Second World War. Um, we saw it uh, in numerous of, time, numerous of instances where the UN, the UN itself was extremely silent when nations went to war, when, when nations encroached uh, and seized and uh, committed similar acts of, uh, acts of aggression against uh, other states. It's not the first time we're seeing it. And um, in these situations, I know a lot of small states feel powerless. And um, the parliament of Venezuela, I do see it. Uh, I do see it uh, because there's... It, it, it goes to show there, there's little or no assistance from the world to Palestine, the people of Palestine. I know people, uh, and I, I must say this here, Hamas was labeled a terrorist organization. Hamas, however, was elected, <laughs> was elected actually. Um, and that, in my estimation, uh, put some things in perspective, is that the, the world should uh, if not for for Hamas, react to what's happening to the people of Palestine, and and in my view, the the reaction of the League of the the United Nations and other countries, it is, is ineffectual. It sends a message that you know, so if this were to happen to Guyana, uh, if the if this were to be encroaches into Guyana, then you you may not be getting the kind of assistance. Well, let's go down the road a little. First, forgive me, Bond, and and uh, uh, Mr. President, if you could also comment on this. I was I I'm a little worried and I get worried too when when you see United Nations and CARICOM and everybody saying and the leader of a country is stating I'm not going to listen to what you say this is war you have Venezuela already telling the world court we are not gonna we're not recognizing you and we're not going down that way um, I know we're talking about the, the 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 Middle East but I cannot allow you to slip away here tonight without asking you. Are we, should we be very worried about the referendum in December from Venezuela? 
Well, listen, I, I think you know, we're dealing with some, some very sensitive issue here that is being dealt with at the level of government. But yes, the government has already asked the, um, the ICJ to uh, pronounce on Venezuela's the referendum and particularly some of the points that they are raising. And I think we're united on the issue. Um, and I don't think anybody, I mean, uh, nobody has said this, but what I'm saying just now, that the, the danger with Palestine, the link with Palestine, as I see it, is, is the erosion of, the, of international law. Um, but I think Mr. Bond has raised a, 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 a point that should be emphasized. Because all of this talk and the mainstream media talk in describing Hamas as being terroristic and all of that, the worst terrorism is what is with, with Israel. This is state terrorism to the highest of what is taking place in the Gaza and in the and in the and in the West Bank. That being sanctioned doing, by some countries. Not only sanctioned, they're killing people, openly killing people, arresting them, and all of that. And, uh, but the point he, uh, I want to make here is that elections were held in 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 Palestine in 2006. And Hamas won those elections, but they were never allowed to govern for a single day. In fact, they had to. That's why why they retreated to the Gaza, where they have the the bulk of their support. But they won the election. They should have been the Palestinian Authority, but they were never given an opportunity to govern. So if you talk about terrorism in a way, then you you force them into that. Because they won election and, and they and they and they were not allowed. I, I want to, to get in one. something before time is up. And Bond um and Gilgari would be too young to understand this. But Donald and I are children of the post war generation. I what I am seeing here, I monitor the news every I'm going home and monitor the news. All the news, Al Jazeera. I I cannot think of another time, I'm speaking now for the generation I belong to and him, because him and I are go much, uh, roughly the same age. I cannot believe there is a time in my generation, my post-1945, 1950-1955 generation, where so much a country is devastating a, a, a nation, another set of people. And um, they are so helpless. When you, when you look at the international Western media, when you look at the most powerful countries in Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, these people, these leaders, just seem to feel that Israel is right to do this. And it reminds me of 1933, 1945, when Germany just feel it could do what it wants to people that were not Germanic. This thing is very, very worrying when you look at how the press, the international press, universities in the United States, I mean, France banned, banned demonstration in support of Palestine. The people still, still, um, still went onto the streets. This thing, the, the, is that is if the Palestinian people are just nothing? But that, that, that you mentioned, it, I mean, that is historical. Uh, we, I think you remember 1799, 1799, 1799, Napoleon actually um, agreed with the Jews to create a state for them. So the sentiments towards, the, the favorable sentiments towards um, the Jewish people have existed for centuries. They've existed for centuries. No, not really, take, no. They're the Zionist Britain, movement started in the in the no, 18th something. No, but no, Napoleon, I could, I could, this is a historical fact I'm saying here. Right. Napoleon tried to rely on. Uh, Napoleon wanted to create a Jewish state since in his time. This is not. This is not just in 1948 and whenever this started way back, way way back. So the sentiments for the European powers um, started way back of a sentiment and a siding with Israel. The Jew with the Jews, I said it would take a lot. Uh, it would take a lot more forceful action to actually uh, for the world to be on the side of the Palestinians. We could understand and we could feel for the Palestinian people. I could feel for the Palestinian people, 
but the European countries, the United Kingdom, France, they cannot feel for the Palestinian people. Because from the onset, it was never about let us enforce the, the two-state program. It was let Israel have theirs, what is theirs. For example, in 1940, they gave Israel the best, the best plots, the, the access to the waterways, the most fertile lands, etc. So their, their interests were never with the Palestinian people. So what is happening now, the outrage that you're seeing, the, the selective outrage, um, you, you, you will see it. You know, you will see it. No, but no, they're, they're in, in those countries, that, I think you've got to make a separation with the leaders and the people of those countries. In all of those countries that you talk about, you have massive, massive demonstrations. demonstrations. Especially there's, in the there's US. A, there is a um, disconnect between the, 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 the governments and the people in those countries. President Biden's popularity has gone down to in, within his party, not in, not in the whole country, within his party, 11%. And, and, and because of his stance that he's taken on on um, on on this question of what is taking place now, so there there is a ruling class that runs these places that taking the position of Israel, but the masses of people are not with them, and that is to me that is one of the most heartening things for me in all of all of what is happening, that the response that the Palestinian struggle has been getting now has never been so overwhelming as it is at this point in time. That is why it gives me a little bit of hope that we cannot go back to the status quo after this. They must go, we must go back to, to negotiating to settle this matter in a two-state way and to go to the, the borders that the United Nations have been talking about, the 1967 borders in... in, in um, it be the 1948 borders because no no the, the, <laughs> let's say what the UN is let's go with what the UN has pronounced on the 1967 borders should be the border where you can you should establish two states and um, the states of and let them live together let them flourish together and let them develop together and and um and I think that is the that is the, what I believe can emerge from this, because what is happening is so horrendous that I don't think anybody would ever want to see something like this to happen again. And if we want to save the UN and, 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 and the world wants to save the United Nations and for it to continue to play the role, I don't agree that it didn't play a proper role. It kept us safe for the, for the prevented another world war for a long time. I think that we should... Um, we should hope and press that this, the, the settling the matter on the basis of a two-state solution is probably, at this time, the, 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 the best thing that can come out of this. Gagari, um, we have signaled that our time is up. Yeah. I want you to conclude, and then I'm going to conclude with a question mm -hmm. to both gentlemen and ask them to do it very quickly. Thank you, Freddie, and thank you, gentlemen. Um, I think the lesson for me and I think the lessons for the Guyanese people would be a couple of things that came out here. One, Russia attacking Ukraine. Um, then you have Israel on, on Palestine. And you're looking at Venezuela. I think Mr. Bond would have raised the point of, of um, you know, the royal order and and the disobedience and, or not adhering to that. And you're hearing one leader telling the United Nations, I'm not listening to you anymore. I think these are very worrying times. We have to continue paying attention because uh, people are asking the question, how is this relevant to this topic that you have in here today? To and it is relevant because the whole world is one village and you have to pay attention. It doesn't only have implications on our economy and our trade, but it has to do because the world reports to each other. They're supposed to. And when you see people taking stands, independent stands, there's a way from the world order. You have to start worrying. Uh, to both to both of you, uh, two two questions with quick comments because our point is a signal we run out of time. One is that if an international arrest warrant could be issued for Mr. P President Putin for taking a, a, a large amount of children from Ukraine to Russia, not killing, 
not injuring them, but taking them from Ukraine to Russia. How, why is not an international arrest warrant not made against Netanyahu? I mean, Putin didn't kill those children. So far, 4,000 children have been killed. That's, um, that's a question to both of you. And very quickly, should CARICOM meet, the heads meet, to dis discontinue diplomatic relations with Israel? Just, you just have, each of you, just have a couple of well, seconds. I've already pronounced on that in something I wrote, that I said that CARICOM should break relationship with, with Israel. That's, that's the biggest type of solidarity that we can give to the people of uh, Palestine who are being treated like less than humans at this point in time, the way things are happening there now. Um, and you're right, I agree with you totally. I, 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 it shows that some of the powerful nations in the world have really taken control of a lot of the, the institutions, the important institutions in the world, because you're right. How can you imagine that the Russian government took children out of harm's way from a, from a war zone area in order to protect them, not to have them killed and they, and, they, and they are charged by the International Criminal Court. And this Netanyahu and his, and his Minister of Defense murdering people by the, one by the thousands and they are not charged. James? Yeah, yeah. Well, very quickly. I, um, yeah, yeah, more to say. Yeah, less than that. Um, the persons who carried attacks on the 7th of October, the person who carried the attacks after the 7th of October should be held accountable, 100%. Um, Hamas and uh, the leaders of Israel who carried these attacks, um, they should be held accountable for the, lo the loss of, of innocent lives. Um, Unbranded war criminals. Unbranded war criminals. Thanks for um, thanks for that. For the input, our final input about war crimes. Uh, this has been the Gildavi Freddy Kisun show. Our topic this evening was the discussion on the, the Israeli aggression in the Gaza. I think we have to be careful with. Um, how we accept words that have come down from generation to us. There is no wall in the Gaza Strip. A war is between two countries, two armies. Our two guests this evening, former president, Dr. Donald Ramatal, um, and James Bond, famous politician from the PNC who says he's on a seven-year hiatus. Um, both myself and Gildavi found the discussion very profoundly enlightening. Um, Friday, we look at the Venezuelan situation. So thanks for joining us on behalf of Leonard Gildavi, uh, President Ramatal, and James Bond. Um, catch you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.